here we have a composite viscera consisting of the C-shaped tube known as the duodenum, the retorted J-shaped structure organ known as the pancreas and the spleen. So we have the duodenum, the pancreas and the spleen. The duodenum as we all know is a 25 centimeters long tube which is divided into four parts. This is the first part which is approximately 5 centimeters long. This is the second part which is approximately 7 to 7.5 to 8 centimeters long. This is the third part which is approximately 10 centimeters long and here we will have the fourth part which goes upwards and continues in the duodenal jejunal flexure and continues into the jejunal. The first part extends from the pylorus up till the superior duodenal flexure. The second part extending from the superior duodenal flexure up till the inferior duodenal flexure. And the third part is present around the inferior duodenal flexure. The location is basically present from L1, L2 and L3. In this lecture, I will be showing you the interior of the second part which is very much important. So if you can see the interior of the second part of the duodenum, we can see certain folds of mucous membrane which are known as the plica circularis also known as the valves of Kerkerine. Here we have the pyloric end. So from pyloric end approximately like 10 centimeters below you can see the opening which is known as the major duodenal papilla. This is an opening in which the main duct coming from the pancreas known as the duct of the virsum along with the bile duct will open into the second part of the duodenum. Okay so this is the major duodenal papilla where the bile duct and the main pancreatic duct will open up. Now just above the major duodenal papilla you can see that we have a fold of mucous membrane just present above it. This is known as the plica semicircularis also known as the monk's hood. This is known as the monk's hood. And the lower longitudinal section this is known as the plica longitudinalis. So we have the plica circularis the plica semicircularis also known as the monk's hood and the plica longitudinalis. One very easy way to identify the major duodenal papilla is to locate the monk's hood. Okay, so monk's hood basically lies above the major duodenal papilla. This major duodenal papilla also has embryological importance because this is the mark up till which the above structure belongs to the foregut and the below structure will be belong to the midgut section. Just two centimeters above the major duodenal papilla, a little bit ventral to it, you can see one more opening or one more papilla present over here. This is known as the minor duodenal papilla. The minor duodenal papilla is the duct or the opening in which the accessory duct of centurini coming from the pancreas is going to open. Okay, so this is about the second part of the duodenum. In pancreas, the pancreas is divisible into four different parts. We have the head. This is known as the head, which is basically present around the concavity of the C-shaped duodenum. This is the head consisting of the anterior surface, the posterior surface, the superior border, inferior border, right border, and the left border, and one process known as the uncinate process. Now, many students get difficulty in identifying the uncinate process. If you can see over here, the vessels, see these are the superior mesenteric vessel. This is the superior mesenteric artery and towards the right side is the superior mesenteric vein. If you lift the superior mesenteric vessel, the structure that you can see downwards, this is known as the uncinate process. Because we know that the mesenteric vessel, the superior mesenteric vessels are present anterior to the uncinate process. So this is basically the uncinate process. So this is the head, this is the neck which will extend from the, the right margin of the portal vein up till the left margin of the portal vein. So this is the neck of the pancreas. Towards the right, this is going to be the head. This is the neck. This is the body, right? This is basically the body. The body consists of three borders. We have the superior border. We have the anterior border and we have the inferior border. How do you identify the superior border? It's very easy. You can trace the splenic artery over here. The splenic artery is present on the superior border of the pancreas. And lastly, we have the tail of the pancreas, which goes into the hilum of the spleen through the lino-renal ligament. Then we have the spleen over here. The spleen consisting of the diaphragmatic surface and the visceral surface. The anterior end present over here. 
the posterior end, the superior body, the superior border having notches, the inferior border and the intermediate border. Then we have impressions on the visceral surfaces. A detailed lecture of the spleen has already been uploaded. You can check on my YouTube channel. Thank you.